Hello there, and welcome to this edition of the Adipec Energy Dialogues, a series of conversations with leading experts from around the world, bringing you up to date with news and trends in the energy sector. I'm Edna Trainer. I'm delighted now, of course, to welcome for this edition, the president and the CEO of Connected Enterprise Honeywell, Q Delara joins us. Q, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, it's good to be with you. Now, I'm also very excited that we're gonna focus in this interview on the essential role of data analytics and artificial intelligence, particularly in building the refinery of the future. So we're very focused on this, thanks so much. And when we look at digital transformation, it's been you know, a tremendous topic, and I think definitely in this year, but many companies, I suppose, have yet to really escalate those efforts too. Particularly in the energy sector, why is it so essential that every company gets on board and actually gets this digital journey underway? Well, if you look at the long run, look, let's look at the last 20 years. Look, digital has had a profound impact on two industries, the media industry and retail. And so when you look at the next 20 years, it's going to have an impact on everything else. And specifically in oil and gas, think about what challenges the industry is facing. Labor shortages, a shortage of um, subject matter experts, profits are down, uh, but expectations couldn't be higher. And we used to have a lot of ways to solve problems, such as driving productivity. Um, but given the cost pressure the industry is going through, not just COVID, but the oil prices, we've got to have a better way. And that path is through digital. I don't think leaders today can ignore it. It's really a tool to help you solve the problems facing uh, our industry. Now, when we look at companies, you know, th their journey at the moment where they are, the data that they already have available, how can they actually transform right now? Well, we kind of think of data as the new oil. And I think a smart use of data in business is what's going to set you apart from your competition um, and give you that extra uh, ounce of uh, performance. So in Honeywell, we, you know, we provide process technologies to the oil and gas industries. We would like to think that we provide data process technologies to the oil and gas industry as well, because we, we help our customers take that data from the environment. Uh, it's a pretty messy process. We clean it up, we make it high octane, and we deliver it where it can be most effective to turbocharge operations for our customers. And so the way that we think about it is that data can help you achieve the next threshold of uh, performance that you can't really get today through uh, bringing together the conventional approaches. Um, two is that um, we can help assets become even more efficient than they are today um, because we get involved in both the construction, uh, the commissioning and the operation of a refinery. And lastly, uh, with COVID, it, it's become very apparent that the ability to operate remotely where you can put your best people in a safe location, but still be able to run your refinery matters more than ever. Yes, indeed it does. And a lot of focus, of course, you know, I think in terms of how digital can help, you know, for safety and everything else. But let's talk about some of the operations that are almost in a way well on their way in the digital journey. Possibly a few challenges still on board. Talk to me a little bit about those. I think there's three challenges. For those who've been around doing digital for a long time, uh, I really commend uh, the leaders. It's, it takes, it's a big leap of courage to go do that. But we see three core challenges. The first one is really around cybersecurity. You know, in the IT world, the tools around cybersecurity are very advanced and a lot of the focus and spend is there. But in the OT world, as you're trying to do digital transformation, you also have to be very careful that the way that you connect uh, devices in the physical world uh, are secure. And you can't just take IT tools and apply them in the OT world because you can stop production and cause uh, safety issues. So thinking about cybersecurity in the OT world matters significantly. And there's certainly a rise of uh, bad actors uh, targeting uh, OT assets that uh, it's got to be the first thing that you think of um, as you think about your digital journey. The second um, interesting challenge is that if you go back 10 years, a lot of companies recognized this challenge and got into data. But what we see now 10 years post 
is the data silos everywhere. And so while there was a lot of fanfare on the use of big data and analytics, we now see data silos all across the enterprise. And it becomes incredibly difficult for leaders to manage this and really uh, blend the data in, in a way that gets insights to the decision makers when they need it. So the idea of data liquidity is a very important concept. In order to get really impact at scale for your business, you have to have enough data to be able to do the analytics in the first place. Um, and then I would say the last challenge is we're seeing the same problem occur as you look at AI and ML models. So people are very excited about what AI and ML tools can do for their business. And they're doing lots of projects across the enterprise, but we see the same problem of where these model silos occur. And we don't believe that you can get significant impact across the enterprise unless you have an operating system that can bring uh, these silos together. Oh, absolutely. And I think we hear that, you know, from everybody when we're talking about it, it's so essential. Um, and that's, and I think the joy and uh, the great advantage too of all the analytics and the data bringing it together and making great use of it because I think the industry has always been good at collecting data, maybe not so good at actually, you know, using it and delivering it. But now everybody talks about the value of partnerships and how important having the right partnerships in place. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, the value that you put on partnerships. Partnerships are very important, especially when the industry is in an early phase of adopting new technologies, because you don't know exactly the right answer yet. You're figuring it out. And so having a longstanding relationship and working it out and being there for your partner when things go wrong matters a lot. So Honeywell announced that we partnered with Adnoc last year to deploy what I think is one of the most lar the largest predictive maintenance projects in the oil and gas industry. These are thousands of assets. And what we're deploying is state-of-the-art asset monitoring and predictive analytics to ad um, uh, infrastructure. And the goal is to drive maximum asset efficiency in both the upstream and downstream operations. So we're super excited about this project. It's already underway and we're working together. And so while we have a vision of how to get it started, um, this is gonna evolve and improve over time. And we couldn't be prouder to be working with a company like Adnoc on this type of innovative program. No, indeed it is, it's, it's very exciting. And when we look at like, I think such a forward looking company too, in terms of, you know, all of the work they're doing and that I think that the value they put on technology and making sure that they're advancing, I guess, you know, every day. So it's uh, it's, it's a joy to be, in the region here, of course, and see the great work that's going on there. So well done on that. And I know the Middle East, obviously a, an important area for you as well. But when it comes to technology, you know, you have many other interesting partnerships in place and a very exciting one recently too. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, last week we announced um, a very great partnership with Microsoft. Um, and it the idea there is how do we bring the data from the OT world, the physical environment, and marry that with IT data uh, that Microsoft does so well. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to solve for is getting insights and uh, the information in the hands of decision makers at the right time so that they can make the decision and drive uh, impact and performance in the business. And it's very similar, the relationship with Microsoft is very similar to what we're doing with SAP. Um, in the same way, because it's it's great to get physical information, but if at the end of the day you can't um, connect it to the business systems, we think we're leaving some opportunity on the table. Um, so those are two examples. We also partner with Halliburton uh, because we wanted to bring Honeywell Forge, which is our suite of um, IoT applications, um, with uh, Halliburton's landmark decision space in order to improve the way that the speculation process. Um, occurs in, in, in delivering um, insights around oil and gas assets. So we're very excited about these par partnerships this year. This is just the beginning um, because this industry is so vast, Edna, you can't do it alone. And if we can combine the best of the best, we think we bring uh, really distinctive uh, value to our customers. Indeed, and it's really about bringing all of that great, tremendous expertise, I think, to bear to have that 
you know, incredible offering that then you bring to your client ultimately that helps them become more efficient and more successful. So well done on that. Congratulations. Great to hear that. But let's come back to the refineries. And when we look at, I think, the, you know, focus that's on the downstream as well. What does the refinery of the future really look like? What would you say? You know, our vision is that every day is their best day of performance and every worker is an expert. So that's what we believe the refinery of the future can deliver. And so what does that mean? We think it means that, you know, anything that can be digitized will be. So all the assets will be connected. The data will be cataloged and clean. The data is sent. Operational teams know exactly what's happening in their environment and its status near real time. Um, on the production side, we think the refinery of the future is operating at peak performance. Because, you know, every day can be up and down because we're going to have predictive uh, analytics. We're going to have the use of tools such as digital twin technologies that help us identify the gap between uh, the current state and the optimal state and how to get there. We also have less downtime because we can identify problems before they occur. We want to move away from this idea of break fix because unplanned downtimes, as you know, can be just catastrophic and expensive. And it allows maintenance teams can fix what really is needed. So we can reduce the amount of spares and inventory we've got, you know, customers have to hold and that ties up cash flow. Um, and then we think the refinery of the future, the longer that it operates in this way, the smarter it gets. We like to think it's a little bit like the Tesla, the car's better today than when you bought it. Um, and so we see this continuous improvement occur as AI is applied and the way that we run the refinery gets optimized and better over time. And then lastly, we see our customers being able to operate these refineries from a remote location. And so that helps you attract talent because you can put your operating center in places that um, are more attractive uh, to the subject matter experts that you have to bring on board. And it means it's also safer because imagine a un un unmanned um, refinery that you know exactly the state of where, how things are operating and how you can improve it. Um, and really only needing to go to the refinery when think, for extremely critical tasks. So um, we're very excited about this future. It's going to take time to get to this point, um, but it's really encouraging to, to, to see examples along the way um, of this future happening. And indeed, you know, digitalization ultimately is also, of course, it's going to help the companies, but it must also help the people involved. And I hear this across the board in all sectors, in all industries, what it's going to bring to the people who are there. And, you know, just thinking perhaps if I'm a field worker, if I'm, if I'm working in, uh, you know, the refinery of the future, how, how does my life change? Well, we want every worker to be an expert. And I think the work life is fulfilling when you're doing something that is, uses all of your talents. Um, and um, given the labor shortages in the industry, um, that's a very big deal. If we want to attract in, uh, talent, top talent and graduates into this industry, we've got to make that work fulfilling. And so one of our goals is that we want every expert, to, every work to be an expert. And the way that we help that happen is we want to reduce the amount of manual work that people do that doesn't really leverage their skills and, and their brains. Um, and we can, if we can get machines and AI to do that, then that reserves the most difficult work and the most cognitive work um, to workers. That's one. Two is that we want to equip workers with um, smart devices that can allow them to access information and on-the-go training. So think of every day as a day of training, just as you go about doing work. Um, we want to be able to connect them to experts that might be remote because who wants to go out to a field to, to fix a, a piece of equipment and realize you don't have, you don't have the spares or you don't have you're hitting a problem you can't solve on your own. You want to be able to call back versus driving back to the main office and then coming back and fixing it. So we're making that work a lot more efficient for workers. And I think that's really important. At the end of the day, we think that digital has um, a huge opportunity to drive safety, uh, greater safety and productivity outcomes for the workers in the refinery of the future. And again, that is so important because, as you say, attracting talent into the industry and also people feeling that, yes, they're they're You know, it's part of their lifelong learning and that they're they're safe at work and uh, that it's it's an exciting time to, I think, to be in the industry. 
And when we look particularly, you know, at the start of a new decade, I suppose it's always, it's been a bit of a bumpy start right across the world. But, you know, as we look back on 2020 and we really look at, I think, every person and every company and every sector and industry really embracing digitalization. Would you say, you know, we're, we're on that, the fast track, so to speak, there's, there's not really any turning back from here, is there? I would imagine we've got to now, the digitalization journey goes forward only. Not only, the, not only is there no turning back, there's an acceleration. We see companies everywhere trying to cram digital transformation in two months, what they would have done in two years. And so I, I, I'm really encouraged by the uh, complete understanding of how critical this can be and how what a great impact this will have, not just on the business, but on the workers that uh, work in this industry. And indeed, you know, what an exciting time to be in the industry. So um, thank you so much for taking the time, Q Delar. I'm really delighted that we had time to have a, a chat and really explore what's going on. But um, good luck with all the work you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. And to all of you watching, I want to thank you for joining us. Of course, the Adipec Energy Dialogues will continue. We want to keep you connected. And of course, we look forward to seeing you at Adipec Virtual. So from myself and from all of the team at the Adipec Energy Dialogues, thank you so much and we'll stay in touch.